Hello and welcome to Brainy Gardener. Today it is all about how to grow and care for the leopard lily. Leopard lily is a popular houseplant. It is commonly known as dumb cane due to its shape and the ability to cause speechlessness if eaten. Native to the Caribbean and tropical South America, it thrives in various climates. It has large leaves that are usually green or variegated with white stripes or spots. Depending on the variety and growing conditions, it can grow anywhere from 3 to 10 feet tall. The flowers are insignificant. This plant is usually grown for its beautiful foliage display purposes only. Dumb cane makes an excellent potted plant for indoor decorating because of its attractive leaf coloration. It comes in all shades of green with various markings of white or cream colors along the edges, giving it a tropical look. The difference in their leaf markings usually identifies different species can be grown outdoors in zones 10 to 12. Leopard lily is a tropical perennial that flourishes in bright, indirect light. It will tolerate lower light levels, but will not grow as quickly. In the home, try to place it near a window to get some indirect sunlight. Depending on the region, they also like direct sunlight in the winter. If used as an indoor house plant, place it near a windowsill that gets plenty of indirect or filtered sunlight. This plant loves moisture. The easiest way to water your plant is to give it a good soaking with plenty of water to allow the soil to become moist. After a few days, you can water again if the soil becomes dry to the touch. If not, wait until it's dry before watering. Never let the soil become too wet as the roots will rot. Keep the soil moist, less so in the winter. Afterward, maintain the routine to encourage rapid growth. Leopard lily needs a warm, wet environment to thrive. The ideal temperature is between 6 to 5 and 7 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature falls below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the plant is at health risk. This plant thrives in humid environments. The best range of humidity is above 60%. If the environment becomes too dry, plants may suffer from drought-related symptoms like leaf spots and discoloration. Fertilize the plant with a balanced 20-20-20 fertilizer in the growing season. You can also use time-release fertilizer pellets to release nutrients slowly into the soil. Make sure to water your plant well after applying fertilizer so the plant can uptake the nutrients. Fertilizer is essential during the spring and summer months when the plant enters its rapid growth phase. Conversely, if you place it in the shade, it grows slowly and needs less feed. There are three ways to propagate leopard lily. One way is by taking stem cuttings. Take a healthy stem with four or five leaves, cut off the bottom of the stem, Strip off all but two leaves and dip in rooting hormone before planting. The second option is to divide the clump. The best time is when the plant is not in bloom. Cut the clump into several pieces using a sharp knife, ensuring each has at least one root. Replant each in a new pot. The third option is by air layering. It's a great way to propagate a large leopard lily or to save a plant that is not blooming. Choose a healthy stem, make a small cut in the stem, and slip a piece of moist sphagnum moss over it. Wrap the moss with some plastic wrap and seal with tape. Make sure the moss stays moist. After several weeks, you will see roots form on the moss. Cut off the rooted section of the stem and plant in moist perlite. When potting a leopard lily, it's essential to use a container at least 10 inches deep. The soil should be well drained. It needs a pot with adequate drainage holes. They grow in various soil types, including peat moss and perlite. Check the pot for overflowing roots every year. If the plant is root bound, it's time to move to a new container. To repot your plant, remove any dried out or dying leaves from the plant. Then take the plant out of its current pot and remove as much old root material as possible from around the roots. Place your plant at the bottom and fill gaps between roots with more soil until you have used all of it. This plant is toxic to humans or pets. Keep your dogs and cats away from the plant. If the sap is ingested, it may render the victim mute for several weeks due to numbing of the vocal cord. The plant is susceptible to a mealybug infestation. Inspect the plant regularly for early signs. If you notice any, treat immediately with rubbing alcohol. 